Hello folks, I'm going to test drive a 2015 Suzuki Bergman. Uh, it's a 400cc. Having some issues with the blue bike, so... I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's technically a scooter, and also technically a motorcycle. Alright. Probably need to turn it on. Oh, that starts nicely. Feel the power. Oh, yes. Mm. So, uh, where's the clutch? How are the mirrors? They don't seem to be showing me too much shoulder, and I think they're adjusted okay. I'll find out. All right. So, relatively familiar with scooters. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I think it's hilarious that it has a tack. I mean, it's nice in a way because it lets you know whether the engine is working hard or not. All right, I'll be back. Thank you. I shall. Okay, this has ABS. Oh, wrong button. Gets up nicely. Engine braking is half decent, which it should be. Steering's a little off center, unless that's just shadows. an older reflex I think or is that a Forza? I think that's a reflex. Okay no clutch. I keep wanting to shift. I haven't ridden a scooter like this in forever and I keep wanting to shift down. There is no shift. It's braking. The thing with something like this is it is the simplicity of motorcycling. And it's enough grunt to get you where you need to go, how you need to go, and when you need to get there. This particular bike has been kept in a garage, and the previous owner has unfortunately passed on. It has almost 1,200 miles on it. It's comfortable. The seat is not bad. It's got a nice back support, lower back support, which is something. I don't know if that's original to this or not. It's got some nice stitching, so it may not be the original seat. The thing with these particular machines that sets them apart from the rest is that they are absolutely designed for touring. You cannot get on a Bergman without immediately sensing the fact that it was designed to be ridden as a touring bike. And as much as it's a scooter in layout, it is certainly a motorcycle in performance. I'm trying to figure out what kind of screen this is. I think it's a GB based on the shape of the logo on it. It's a nice screen. <laughs> Sorry. You're not used to the placement of the blinkers and stuff. Uh, keep hitting the horn. Ah, I love it. Now, one nice thing about this is it does have the option of putting your feet forward in a uh, touring position. I like it. I really like it. You know what happened the last time I liked a bike that I test rode? I ended up buying it. The NT is a great bike. I, I love it. It has worked well for me for two years. But now with the issues with the throttle body going nuts on me. Well, the throttle position sensor, which unfortunately you can't get without the throttle body. <sighs> my feeling is that I'm going to need to end up getting a different bike. Which is unfortunate. For a thumper, this is a lot smoother than I'd expect. At speed, I don't feel the vibration that I'd expect out of a single cylinder 400cc, which is what this is. Overhead cams, all that fun stuff, everything you'd expect from a refined touring motorcycle. Again, it's not designed to be fast, but we'll see how fast we can get it once we get to the highway. You feel the vibration when stopped. I do like the readout on the dash, it's nice. Nice fuel gauge, speedometer's easy to read. Got a temperature gauge there in the middle, which is nice. It's got a clock, which is also nice. Of course, most bikes have that now. My 2013 PCX did not. The only thing I don't like is this gets away from my Honda obsession. <laughs> which I love my Hondas. They're good bikes. Oh, I'm going 55. Ugh, that was unintentional. Okay, this is a little hard to keep to a lower speed. It's a 35 mile an hour zone and I was doing 55. <laughs> That's uh, like four points. I don't want that. When I twisted the throttle, I could feel the hind end on this thing rise up a little bit. It kind of booted me in the rump. Again, going way too fast. Jeez. Oh, it does have a little bit of nimbility to it. Wow, 
I was able to avoid that particular bump pretty easily. There's some very nice things about a bike like this. Number one, again, it's got everything you need and it's comfortable and it's designed for the long ride. It's not designed to go slow, but it's also not designed to go super fast. It's designed to take you up to highway speeds if necessary and to just enjoy the touring. And touring on a motorcycle doesn't necessarily mean highway riding. That means that you're just going long distances. And this is set up for that. The wind protection is amazing. I like it quite a bit. The high windscreen does wobble a bit, but I don't think it's original to the machine. I think that is an aftermarket windscreen. Oh, somebody got an orange sticky on their motorcycle. That's no good. Up to 50 flawlessly and a little bit past. The difference between this and something like the Grom, which is not designed for anything beyond 45 miles an hour, realistically, there's no vibration at speed. The tires, despite being probably the originals that were on it in 2015, feel okay. It doesn't feel rigid and it wants to move around. It's everything you want out of a touring motorcycle without being gargantuan. You can put side bags on it if you want it. But even if you don't, it's got a huge amount of storage underneath the seat. You could fit three small children under there. Okay, maybe not, but it is great for taking people across the border. <laughs> Sorry. See here how it does around a little bit of squiggles. People take these things on the tail of the dragon and other twisty roads and they're generally fine for that kind of thing. The nice thing is there's no hesitation. Twist the throttle and off you go. up on a highway. A little buffeting from the truck ahead of me. That's a little faster than I expected to be going. I wasn't even monitoring my speed. Thank you to uh, Jerry and Roy and Will from Lancaster Honda for letting me drive this. It's fantastic. Motorcycling simplicity. Just get on, twist the throttle, and off you go. That is the beauty of something like this. The only thing I could say about this that I haven't already said, if I were to have such a bike, the only change I think I would make is the exhaust, just because I like a bit of an exhaust note. It's perfect as it is. Well, I might put on a different windscreen that doesn't wobble around like that. So, quick synopsis. It's a nice bike. It looks like the previous owner did put some wheel tape on it. That's kind of cool. It's set up well. It's got ABS. You can see the ABS ring on the other side of the dual brakes. Again, I'm fairly certain this is not the original seat. There we go. It's got a kickstand for the seat. Check that out. Little prop. Not as much space as the Bergman 600 has at 650, but it's a lot of space in there. So, again, this is a 2015, so it's an uh, eight-year-old model, but I like it. I could ride one of those. Well, I just did. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Be safe, be well, and be blessed. May your wheels never be parallel to the ground, and thank you for watching. Scootin' Fool out.